Hey there, welcome to Smarter Tech. I'm so excited for this episode. I'm basically uh, revealing to the public for the first time an interview I did with Dr. Zach Bush uh, three years ago uh, in Vermont. I had the immense privilege to meet Dr. Bush in person two times uh, in a row, in fact, because I was speaking at uh, an event called Nourish Vermont, and he's a wealth of knowledge. And in this episode, which is part of the professional level course I launched with many uh, scientists, doctors, international collaborators back in 2018 called uh, Electrosmog RX. This interview reveals basically Dr. Bush um, surprised when he first discovered that uh, microwave illness or uh, electro hypersensitivity was a thing. So as a a uh, world uh, world class expert as a triple board certified a a doctor, he himself discovered the hard way that um, his patients are affected by EMFs way more than it, than he initially thought. So I'm going to read his bio real quick here. Dr. Zach Bush, uh, Zach Bush is a physician in internal medicine, endocrinology, and hospice care. He is an internationally recognized educator and thought leader on the microbiome as it re relates to health, disease, and food systems. He founded the Seraphic Group uh, and the nonprofit Farmers Footprint to develop root cause solutions for human and ecological health. His passion for education reaches across many disciplines, including topics such as the role of soil and water ecosystems in human genomics, immunity, and gut-brain health. His education has highlighted the need for radical departure from chemical farming and pharmacy, and his ongoing efforts are providing a path for consumers farmers and mega industries to work together for a healthy future for people and planet. So if you're listening to the video version, unfortunately, this uh, interview was audio only, but I think you'll appreciate the content because Dr. Zagbo just has a different understanding on a very different level than most scientists or doctors have when it comes to how EMFs impact water in your body and also the tight junctions between your cell, especially the gut lining. So without further ado, let's dive into my interview with Dr. Zach Bush. Hey, this is Nick Pino, and welcome to this Electrosmog RX interview series. Today, I'm here with Dr. Zach Bush, and Dr. Bush is one of the few triple board certified physicians in the country with expertise in internal medicine, endocrinology, and metabolism, and that's a mouthful, and hospice palliative care. And the breakthrough science that Dr. Zach and his colleagues have delivered offers profound new insights into human health and longevity. In 2012, he discovered a family of carbon-based redox molecules made by bacteria, and his team has subsequently demonstrated that this cellular communication network functions as an antidote to glyphosate. I want to hear more about that. And ma many other dietary, uh, chemical, and pharmaceutical toxins that disrupt our body's natural defense systems. And God knows we have a lot of these around these days. And this science has resulted in a revolutionary class of dietary supplements, including the product Restore. Dr. Bush, welcome to this interview series. Thanks so much for being here tonight. Thank you, Nick, for having me. It's great. And what a setting do we have because we're actually in person. This is the first interview of this series I'm doing in person. We're at the Shelburne Farms in Vermont. And it's just, uh, I feel like I'm back in the Victorian times or something. Yes, I, I had the same experience pulling in here. I've spoken all over the world, and this is definitely the healthiest <laughs> place yeah. I've ever lectured in. And, uh, and the food is, is just off the charts. So with that in mind and with this uh, this new energy, energized by the place, let's get into things. And th something I saw, um, I, it's actually the only clip that I have on the internet that I could find of you talking about EMFs, about electromagnetic fields, is a two-minute clip that you gave a talk. It's an excerpt of a talk you gave at something called the Global Foundation for Integrative Medicines Conference in October 2016. And you were part of an EMF panel Q&A, if you remember correctly. And you shared 
how EMFs affect cell-to-cell -cell communication. So I think this is a great starting point for our interview. And you shared something about um, how cell-to-cell -cell communication acts as fiber optic cable. Can you start there? Because it, it, it was completely fascinating to me. And unfortunately, that was just three minutes. I want to <laughs> yeah, hear the let's rest. Ju let's dive in on that. Sure. So... Um, the interesting thing or mistake perhaps that we've made as, as human researchers is we've focused on human cells as kind of our interest point. So 99% of our research in any disease process, cancer, heart disease, you know, mood disorders, you, neurologic conditions, you name them, we've been focused on what is happening inside the human cell. And right. all of the drugs we've developed, all of the supplements we've developed over time are targeting some pathway within the human cells. The discovery that we made with the bacteria and the fungi is their system of communication seems to regulate the extracellular matrix. This is the scaffold proteins that make up the, the building blocks or the framework within which our cells function. Not only in which they function, but actually where they birth. You've heard about stem cells, of course. And right. Stem cells don't know where to go or what to do unless they're tied in with this extracellular matrix. The extracellular matrix defines the space and the environment and tells, helps tell the cell what are you to become. And so the extracellular matrix has this huge role in cellular identity that has just begun to be teased out. There's a few different constituents of that extracellular matrix. One of them is the tight junctions. The tight junctions are the barrier system between the outside world and the internal environment. Right. And that begins at the gut lining. That's your biggest exposure to the outside world. And so the, the gut environment there is, is trying to protect you from the uncontrolled or unregulated flow of material from the outside world in your immune system. So that's kind of the tight junction. They're kind of an intelligent gatekeeper. Sitting behind that is adherins and some other proteins that are kind of like uh, you can picture an anchor being thrown into the bottom of the ocean on a boat or something like that. So they look like anchor proteins that are holding large protein matrices both inside the cell and outside the cell in coherent communication. Behind that, so maybe your third third series down as you go deeper and deeper in the cellular structure is the gap junctions. And these are the ones that I refer to as the fiber optic cables of the system. Okay. Gap junctions are tiny, right, in, in their makeup. You know, you've seen a cable before. You, you might have a half-inch cable that's made up of you know thousands and thousands of tiny little fibers of steel. That's what the fiber optic system looks like. It's a relatively large structure that kind of connects one cell to the other, but it's made up of tiny, tiny fibrils within that. And so under an electron microscope, if you type in gap junction into Google Images, electron microscope if needed, you'll see these extraordinary structures of these tubules that run from the inside of one cell called the cytoplasm, where all of the work is done within the cell. It's where we make our proteins it's decoded from dna it's all this environment but importantly it's also where the mitochondria live and so in this issue of electromagnetic field we have to think about the mitochondria because they produce most of the electrical energy in the body right and they produce a lot of it right and yeah. so the mitochondria if you compare you know the density of the mitochondria and their productivity to something like the surface of the sun which is a nuclear reactor you're about 10,000 times more efficient in creating electrical energy out of mitochondria than you are the surface of the sun. Wow. And so the mitochondria are exploding with electrical energy all the time. They derive that from glucose, which is sugar, and fatty acids, the breakdown products of fats in your diet. And so those two macronutrient fuels that you consume, the fats and the sugars, will ultimately turn into fuel for the mitochondria, which will convert that to electrical energy. So now imagine your furnace burning 10,000 times more efficiently per cubic inch than the surface of the sun and pulsing electromagnetic energy through your body, generated from the mitochondria and passed through the cytoplasm, traffic through one fiber optic system to the next, so that from cell to cell to cell, you're getting this uninterrupted information flow. That's the description in my book of a healthy human body. Now you start to add you know, chemicals and compounds to the diet that break those fiber optic cables and, and at the same time start to pollute and poison the mitochondria. You're both losing the energy source and you're losing that network of communication between the cells. And that's when we become very prone to external 
electromagnetic field toxicity. So, and and it's also I, I think I think it's just a different view of the work of Dr. Martin Powell on the no ono cycle, which is it, which explains that the the, the co toxicity of uh, of like we address in the course of heavy metals, mold and emfs and so when you add all these factors then you get a strong effect an even stronger effect from the electromagnetic field would you agree yes Uh, once once you're already compromised because if you have incredible resilience in in your barriers and your mitochondrial energy you're not as affected by foreign signals so to speak 100 percent agree and that's one of just single strength right and so you experience this in your car radio you're driving down the highway, you're listening to your favorite radio station, and suddenly sh- 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 static, and then suddenly you're picking up a different radio station. Well, the, the, the generator of the energy didn't change. You know, the, the broadcast station in your local town is still broadcasting at the same frequency, at the same intensity. You just got too far away from the information. Now you're getting outside static and then ultimately outside signal right. into your radio. Same thing happening, I think, in the human antenna system. We are electrical beings. We have antennae that collect information from the environment. We know that insects do this all the time. In fact, only solely really see the world through these ultraviolet and kind of high vibration frequency resonance images that they see the environment in. And so from the bug species all the way to the human, we're reacting to our environment. And if we're the most potent generator of signal, it's always Zach on the phone. You know, I can wake up, radio program Zach. I can go to sleep. I'm Zach. If I start to really lose my self-identity at the cellular level, if I get an erosion of the tight junctions, I start to lyse my fiber optic cable system, I start to poison my mitochondria, I literally start to get static from other sources. Am I actually bacteria? Am I actually fungi? Am I actually spirochetes or lime? Am I actually, you know, any of these other number of things? Am I actually... A cell phone resonance, you know? Am I yeah. a cell phone tower? Am I a Wi-Fi router? What the heck am I? Because I'm responding to all of these radio signals, if you will, uh, at the molecular level. And I, I, I love that view because I think it's it's always the story when you have a toxin like EMF that is brand new. Our exposure I shared in my talk this this morning, and this is Dr. Mercola who shared that before me, a quintillion times higher is the exposure the average city versus ancestral levels in the microwave range, microwave radiation range. That's a lot of zeros. It's, it's unprecedented. So it's, it's all a, a big experiment. And even when you look at the science, the science has even the NTP study that is the latest national toxicology program um, study that looked and that confirmed clear evidence of carcinogenicity in rats. Well, they use 2G, 3G technology. This is even the older stuff. So there's a limit to the amount of um, studies that we can that can come out, and then we're going to be to 5G. And by the time we study 5G, we're going to be to 9Gs. So I think having the view that, well, the human body is electrical, it's complex, and when you add external electricity, there might be something being disrupted. I think it makes a lot of sense. Uh, what do you see... In your practice, as far as do you see people that have been exposed by a lot of EMS or maybe feel them have some sort some sort of sensitivity? Unquestionable. I mean, I I, I see it very frequently in my clinic. I, I would say the vast majority of those people have already figured that out for themselves, right. and they come in saying. I couldn't figure out for two decades why I was having migraines until I suddenly realized I kept getting them on the same stretch of road. And then I, you know, by coincidence, looked up one day and on the mountainside is a big old cell phone tower right there, you know. There you go. And they make those correlations. And the first times I heard that, I didn't believe it at all. I I was like, that's got to be an irrelevant correlation. Yeah. But then as I got into the microbiome and started realizing, you know, we are lysing our energetic system by losing the the microbial life around us that would maintain that fiber optic system, it started to come into the possibility in my mind. Since then, you know, the last six years fast forwarded, I have patients that are so well documented now as far as their EMF toxicity. The best one documented is an electrician that's in my clinic. Uh, he, He... 
he was an electrician for his whole career and then subspecialized in smart house systems, so these housing oh, systems that are yep. Bluetooth throughout the whole house and everything else. And so he'd be in these enclosed spaces in small closets installing right. enormous amounts of the Bluetooth face equipment. in the router, right? Yeah, it, literally. literally inches from his body all yep. around surrounded by this stuff. And the cumulative injury that he got over a couple of years of installing these systems was pretty profound. He couldn't sleep anymore. He was having profound insomnia. He was having profound chronic fatigue syndrome, starting to develop you know, arth- arthritic kind of symptoms, mm-hmm. chronic pain, all of this going on. Uh, was looking at really having to lose his job and close his company and everything else. He was just becoming disabled until he started to to realize that when he'd have to take a week off, he would suddenly you know recover almost inexplicably from his syndrome uh, in a matter of days. He'd start to feel better, never quite back to baseline. And he started to realize that his job was toxic for him. And he happened to be one of those guys that that started to identify the cell phone towers would trigger it. So as he was driving down highways, Mm. he could feel the wax and wane in his own mental acuity based on how close he was to the next cell phone tower. Um, And so he's now subsequently over the last decade of his life. He had all of the meters and the know-how to like measure it in his right. environment. So As got, an engineer, you know, yeah, it was a, natural. It thing was to do. easy, you know, testing for him to put into play. And he's now cleaned up his house completely, where he has almost no, you know, dirty EMF around right. him. And he's he's at the top of his function. He travels around teaching children and schools how to, you know, try to reduce EMF toxicity in elementary schools and stuff like this for right. our school it- kids. So. What about his own sensitivity? Did he end up ge- getting? Less sensitive? Less sensitive. Yes, over time? Yeah, more resilient over time. Yeah. Yep. And this is something that I see. I see I see it, uh, or I heard two sides of the story. I, I, I was talking to Paul Check, one of the, the fitness pioneers, and he told me that when he got more in tune into his body, he could feel EMS more. In other words, like using a cell phone would he lost his, his edge. So maybe that's one side when you're extremely healthy, you're attuned to what is disrupting you. But also I hear from people with electro hypersensitivity that are extremely sick. Once they start fixing, sometimes it's a, a moldy basement. They, they remove that and maybe they start addressing the diet part and the stress response. And over time, it looks like they can handle more. Maybe now they can have a getaway in the city. after. And, yes. and before they were in the middle of the forest for some people they're still stuck there um so is there something in particular on top of removing sources with that client the electrician that you did to restore normal response or let's say add add resiliency to 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 his body sure he was he was one of our first patients to go on to restore uh six years ago restore is a dietary supplement we've derived from the bacteria and fungal uh communication network that's in fossil soils and uh, this communication network, once put into the human system, upregulates the, the production of our extracellular matrix very quickly. So we see proteins like DPP4 enzymes that break down toxins that would challenge that fiber optic and gap junction system. And then we can you know, speed up into the reality where we can see you know, him get to the point where he's hydrating better. He has just better immune function uh, through restoring that tight junction, gap junction environment. Um, so that was the main intervention that we contributed other than just remove the, the EMF interference. Once the gap junctions are there and his radio signal came on strong of, you know, I am me, <laughs> yeah. and then he became more resilient almost overnight, you know, and, and he could also come off that product and show within a couple of weeks, you know, an erosion of that self-identity if you will and, and an increasing intolerance to the emf environment so that's something you would take continuously for the rest of his life or well un- unless we could get his microbiome back to normal right and so yeah. if we could get him you know living in su- in you know a tribal environment in sub-saharan africa <laughs> where they're eating tribal foods and right. never seen chemical agriculture i think within weeks or months he'd be so resilient he would need no supplementation yeah. whatsoever um, if we could get him down, you know, safely living in a microbiome of the tropical environment, which ta- which is difficult, right? And so if you put somebody's immune system is not ready for yeah. that and you thrust them into a completely different ecosystem, yeah. it can be freaking challenging. Yeah, it can be. Yeah, it, uh, well, you can get sick in, in a way that, or challenge in a way that you're 
immune system has never seen before. Right. Uh, yeah, it's, it's incredible. And so tell me a little bit more about hi- the hydration part. I um, I listened to the interview you gave uh, Dr. Joe Mercola lately, or maybe it was months ago, but it was sure. posted lately about hydration and your hydration protocol. I found it extremely interesting. I, 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 I've been taking Restore myself for a couple of months, but also adding electrolytes to my water, and then I was adding uh, cream of tartar, which is potassium, extra potassium, and I felt that my symptoms of electrosensitivity, which are just, uh, if I hang out in a Starbucks, I, my, my health goes down, I get caffeine cravings, it's just it, it was bad, but but not extreme. But I felt like this this was working for me. So is that something that you recommend for people with electrosensitivity, hydration protocol, proper hydration? Is that is that a problem for people with EHS? In in, in your opinion, I actually I think they go hand in hand. And that if you're if you have perfect intracellular hydration, meaning that you have enough water inside your cells, I, I think it'd be relatively impossible to have EMF sensitivity. Uh, the, the the water within the cells is always going to be directly equivalent or track parallel to the, the integrity of the extracellular matrix. So mm. one of the first things that happens as you break up the gap junctions, tight junctions, etc., is you're going to lose the electrical potential of any macro membrane or barrier system. And s- subsequently, within minutes to hours to days, you'll start seeing the erosion of the electrical charge across a single cell membrane. And so at that point, as the electrical charge drops within the cell, you see, and that's largely by two mechanisms. One, the the insulation of the cell wall deteriorates. And so now picture like a copper wire with a plastic coating over it. You start to put holes in that plastic coating. Mm. You're going to start to leak electricity. You'll get shorts, right? Right. And you'll start to... And does the fatty... The, even the fat content could could have something to do? The lipid membrane, exactly. The lipid membrane, yeah. okay. So the lipid membrane is not just phospholipids. And so the phospholipid membrane has to be integrated with large uh, structural proteins that in, inform the phospholipid membrane on how to traffic material from one side to the other. Yeah. And one of those main things is the aquaporin channel. And the aquaporin channel looks like, you know, you know somebody drilled hole in the, in the wall, but it has a very cool quantum physics barrier system that keeps electrolytes from moving across it. And the only thing that can move across an open aquaporin is the H2O molecule. So it's right. a quantum physics miracle that, you know, yeah. I don't think anybody has really worked out the, the details on. Yeah, I, I heard a little bit about that and how, uh, yeah, aquaporins and how it's it's too small to let certain things in. And there's, yeah, it's the quantum physics can explain how it's happening, but through normal physics, it just doesn't fit. So it's it, it's it's fascinating. And what is the hydration protocol in particular? I think you mentioned that half the water someone would be drinking would be with electrolytes added, and and half not. What what exactly do you recommend? Yeah, so I like that pumping action. So electrolyte water is a helpful way of getting a, a, you know, in a perfect environment where you have high resilience, your phospholipid membranes are intact, you've got all of the structural proteins in the mitochondria functioning, and you've got a strong electrical charge across the membrane. You don't have to work to get water inside the cell. It just happens. Right. Naturally. As we get, as we deteriorate that through our chemical environment, I think that Roundup and glyphosate is probably the primary challenge to that system that we see worldwide now. But that, you know, as we start to lose that potential, we have to kind of fake the system, right? We need to, to augment the, the water system to get this natural pumping action across the cell membrane. And so the way that we work with that in our clinic, at least, I think there's probably a number of different routes to this, but we found that the most effective way is after you've fixed the tight junction system with something like Restore, then you're moving towards getting water pushed across not just the macro membranes with the tight junctions, you're working on getting the single cell with the aquaporins moving. To do that, you want to traffic electrolytes through the, the electrolyte channels, things like the calcium channel and you know potassium sodium pumps on the surface of the cell to get those nutrients. You mentioned the potassium-rich foods right. and things like that to try to get potassium-rich potassium gets pumped inside the cell very aggressively and sodium gets pumped out of the cell very aggressively and so you got this electrolyte exchange going which builds electrical charge across that single cell membrane that will then pull water through that quantum physics miracle through those aquaporin channels 
So by using electrolyte water, you're encouraging the potassium and other nutrients into the cell to create that gradient. And then you follow that with DI water or deionized or um, water. And the goal of a deionized kind of distilled water is to create an osmotic gradient out of the cell. And so you're pumping electrolytes in to get water flushed in, and then you pull it back out with distilled water. If all you drank was distilled water, you'd actually seep a bunch of nutrients out of your body right mm. over time. But by using it as a pumping action, so every 30 minutes you're drinking four ounces of water. On the hour, it might be electrolyte rich. On the half hour, it might be just DI water. And so by distilled water kind of pumping it back out and electrolyte pushing it in, you're getting this nice detox effect where you're pushing. Water is ultimately your only detox mechanism. There's hundreds of products on the market today that say, hey, we're a detox this or right. that. Well, that's only true if it interacts with water, right, or if it yeah. somehow encourages water to get inside the cell. Because there's no nutrient that in and of itself is going to cleanse the cell. You've got to have the detergent there, which is the water. Yeah. <clears throat> and so – that's kind of the the protocol we use that electrolyte versus distilled water pump. So if you don't have distilled distilled water, can be I, I guess you can buy it by the gallon in in certain places uh, fairly cheaply. Is is RO reverse osmosis an alternative? It would be a, a close second. It's not going to work second. the same as distilled water. Okay. But I'm not convinced distilled water is totally necessary. I think that, you know, I'd be totally happy with that scenario if you've got reverse osmosis water. Okay. Frankly, whatever you do to hydrate, you're, you're improving the system. Yeah. The average human being is walking around so flipping dehydrated because most of our liquid intake is not water, right? It's, it's you know, some beer, latte. It's a and beer. Coffee. It's, and, you know, yeah. it's, you know, it's any kind of number of... of you even look at the health industry right now. Kombucha has become this huge phenomenon. Yeah. Well, that is a sugary beverage that may have some fermented goodness in it. Yeah. But ultimately, it's not delivering f free water into the system. And so, again, I think that these things actually have a role. So something like a fermented beer or a fermented wine, these things have a, a, a toxin threshold to them. But what we see is a protective effect whenever you, you know, if you just drank straight water and you had a sick system, the combination of those two would, you know, may not be an ideal scenario. And so I think some challenge to the system is probably helpful. At least that's how biology looks. Acute inflammation is a very important part of longevity and the healing process. And so some degree of injury seems to be beneficial to the body and increase the longevity and the turnover and the resilience of the system. That's why you drink beer tonight. Well, yeah, that's why I drink beer. It, <laughs> I it, injure my it's, body. <laughs> yeah, it's also why I run. Because every, right, time, exactly. every time I run, I, yeah. I do billions of little microfractures through all my weight-bearing sure. bones. Yep. And the result of that is I get stronger bones at the end of the day. Yep. But if you don't challenge the system, you can see this in any anybody. You know, nursing home patients... They only drink water, but are yeah. they hydrated? No, not at all. You know, they, they are profoundly dehydrated. that's because their system is broken. Their system is atrophying in real time. Yeah. They're not moving at the molecular level as much as they are at the physical level. Yeah. So they're stagnant on, like, every single level of biology, and, and their whole system is shutting down at an extraordinarily fast rate. All of that tying back to hydration. And the way that hydration then ties back into the EMF, of course, is through the magnetic field. When we say EMF, we're talking about the electrical magnetic field. Sure. The magnet that we're talking about is ultimately H2O. H2O is a magnetic molecule. The oxygen and the hydrogen are going to be releasing each other every millionth of a second. So every millionth of a second or maybe a fraction of a millionth of a second, oxygen is releasing one of those two hydrogens holding on to their electron but releasing the, the hydrogen. And so at any given millionth of a second, H2O is never H2O. It's OH with an extra electron. <laughs> and so that's a very interesting quantum physics reality of like wow. it, water isn't actually H2O. It's OH in a dynamic state. And that's, I think, how water can get through an aquaporin channel because the bend that's in an H2O molecule, if it was structural – that they were attached to each other, they couldn't get through that yeah. that pore. The angle is wrong. Gotcha. It's it's like getting a a boomerang to fit through 
you know, a pinhole. Yeah. But if you break the boomerang in half, now each half of the boomerang can slip through that thing. And that's what water is ultimately, is, is just portion of that boomerang uh, at any given millionth of a second. And it's affected by the magnetic field inside the EMF, and that's something Paul Heru from Montreal has shown in his research. And the way he explains how EMFs disrupt us on a, on a mitochondrial level is that the way I understand it, and I'm probably butchering this, but it's the magnetic field affects water structure, and and then this impacts ATP production in the mitochondria. And it's a, a bit of a different view than the, the voltage-gated calcium channel of Martin Paul, but in the end, what it causes is a slowing down of ATP, and hence you go up in the amount of oxidative stress that is caused through, like, it burns dirtier. Is the, Does that make sense? Yes. Yeah, yes. I would agree with that. And I think, you know, this is all theoretical quantum physics so no, yeah. nothing proven out for, on my end of the equation here but one of the interesting things is that the the exchange of that o and the h and that release of the h is creating a negative positive polar magnet even in, in the h2o molecule and so as you as you blow apart the h2o molecule in, in this quantum physics vibration you're creating all of these magnetic events throughout the whole system And one of the structures it seems to be very good at interacting with in that magnet state is DNA of the human mm. nucleus, within the human nucleus. And so there's some of us that are starting to believe that the DNA is actually the antenna system of your body. And yeah. it's the water's interaction with that antenna-like DNA that allows you to receive the signal of you. Because somehow... In this universe full of electromagnetic field resonance frequencies of every type and variety, you keep receiving the same signal at the molecular level. At the cell level, there's not a single cell in your body that wakes up thinking you're Zach. Yeah. You wake up saying Nick every day. And every one of your cells says Nick, 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 Nick. That is profound. I, I mean, it gives me goosebumps to this day to think about that. Like You have self-identity at the cellular level down at this antenna level and you can screw that up or you can add static by first screwing up the water transfer inside the cell that happens through breaking the extracellular matrix through roundup and glyphosate and molecules like that it happens through too much alcohol so if you exceed your your, your gut um, enzyme potential you'll do tight junction damage across the blood brain barrier and everything else so you can damage it through any gluten you get refined gluten with high gliadin and do the same thing so you, all of these potential injuries can start to erode that and you start to lose hydration inside the cell through these mechanisms and at the same time toxify the mitochondria you're screwing up your genetic signal your own dna yeah. self identity and that just gives me freak out as a former cancer researcher this is now the heart of the manner because a cancer cell is ultimately a cell that lost its self-identity and that's profound that's that that's just an incredible view i think it's a it's an entire reframing of even understanding how emfs uh, disrupt us and i saw one study and it's actually dr martin blank who's been studying dna as a fractal antenna he has a paper 2015 i think on that and he's studying the fact that his theories is that literally DNA is a fractal antenna and it is a communication system. So I think it makes a lot of sense and it, it completely reframes how we see the body. But I think, unfortunately, a lot of even a lot of scientists that who don't understand the body don't even think about the fact that we're bioelectric. So they're so far off from this understanding and even most people who do cancer research are, are, are not understanding these these new emerging ideas. And I, I think it's it's uh, extremely fascinating. And I have a couple more questions. I want to be respectful of your time. It's been incredible. And um, let me know, did you experience uh, results using uh, molecular hydrogen or hydrogen-rich tablets? Did you hear about it? What's your opinion on it or pass if you, if you have never tried it? I've used it pretty aggressively. I'm pretty convinced by the science around it. It's a pretty interesting science around molecular hydrogen. certainly works very well in disease states. And so where okay. you've tipped into chronic inflammation, uh, the, it's a very potent upregulator of 
uh, the antioxidant system. It actually functions as a selective antioxidant. Yes. One of the toughest I- I- uh, oxidants the body handles or experiences in a day is hydroxyl free radicals. Interestingly, a hydroxyl free ra- radical is an O in the H, right? Yeah. But it's an O and H hungry for that extra electron that it would have if it was in the water state. And so hydroxyl molecule is in mm. some ways just a, a broken water molecule. And so a broken wow. water molecule oh, yeah. becomes one of your most profound oxidants or rusting phenomenon within the body. And hydrogen is the uh, obvious solution to that because if you add enough hydrogen back to the OHs, you're going to get H2O in the end. Yes. And so I love the science. It's beautiful. I, I've... You know, drinking a ton of hydrogen, trying to show some sort of benefit in my body. I haven't been able to measure a benefit, but it's likely because I'm kind of I'm I'm within a biological threshold where <laughs> I'm sure I, I you know I and that's why I've drank a lot of it. Is I'm convinced I can get healthier than I am today, but it may be just difficult to measure. We may not have the right parameters to measure that yet. Yeah, but, you know, most of the hydrogen research. Well, all of the hydrogen research really came right out of Japan initially. So Nagoya University was one of the forefront foci for this science. And, and they've, they're they now 15, 20 years ahead of us in, in the United States as far as their understanding of hydrogen and its role in therapeutics. They already use it clinically. So if you walk yep. into an ER with a heart attack, you're going to be breathing hydrogen. You're going to be taking hydrogen orally. Uh, if you go to a vending machine in Tokyo, you're going to find hydrogen and water. You know, you're going to be, you know, getting all kinds of different avenues towards hydrogen. I'm convinced by the science. I think it works. I've had a hard time measuring its benefit in my patients as well, even those with chronic inflammation. Um, but I, you know, what we were finding more and more is that just adding a glass of water with some hydrogen in it at, you know, one part per million is a typical level that you'll see in these hydrogen tablets and the hydrogen machines. The, the hydrogen machines that actually produce hydrogen water in your house, it's usually like a few parts per billion. It's even a, you know maybe ten, tenfold less than the okay. tablets will produce. But even the best machines on the market are only in this kind of one part per million typically. And so at that level, we're probably not superseding the capacity of the microbiome to make H2. And so the vast majority of your, micro, your H2 or hydrogen that should be produced in the body should be made in your gut from the microbiome. So there's a bunch of bacteria and fungi that produce hydrogen in their metabolic state. And so that hydrogen is being produced 24 hours a day and is immediately available to the bloodstream as soon as, soon as it's produced. The really cool thing about hydrogen is it's tiny, right? It's yeah. the smallest element on the periodic table, and it's a thousand times smaller than the next, you yeah. know, the second smallest. So it is so tiny uh, as an element, and it's the most ubiquitous element in the universe. And so uh, certainly a building block of all of nature in the universe is hydrogen. And the beauty of that smallness is it goes everywhere instantly. And so you, it'll penetrate through your bones. It'll go through every organ in your body. Uh, if you were to you know stand in a room that had a hydrogen gas pumped into it, H2, you would immediately absorb that at an equilibrium state within seconds of entering the room. Wow. And yeah. so it just penetrates everything. And this is a little bit challenging. If we were supposed to just get hydrogen from bottled waters and stuff, we'd have a challenge because it penetrates plastic. It penetrates all kinds of different – it is very hard to contain hydrogen. Right. And so – uh, so at any rate, I, I'm, I love the concept of hydrogen, but I think we're going to find out that your best source is probably not a tablet. It's probably enriching your microbiome, and then your microbiome will take care of your hydrogen production for you. Yeah, and, I, and I've heard that, that, that the tablets represent maybe a small fraction of what is produced uh, and endogenously. So I don't, I don't know. I, the, the science looks good. I, I've, I've experimented with it myself. It seems like my brain is getting clearer. But I don't know. Uh, I believe that. I, 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 yeah. I trust that it can work because, I, I mean, the clinical trials that are coming out of Japan for Parkinson's disease, for example, are undeniable. Right. Yeah. It improves neurologic yeah. function and somebody's got a chronic inflammatory state in the brain. If you're inflamed, that's, when I get brain fog from EMS, then I take molecular hydrogen. You'll and see the difference. I see the difference. I can totally see that. if I'm totally fine, maybe not. So maybe that's, that's something. And, and I think when it comes to NRF2 regulation, it, it, it seems to upregulate it when you need it and not necessarily it kind of go 
above baseline and you become superhuman. I don't think it's something like that. I think it's something that brings you back to normal. So uh, there's an argument for it. I, I can't wait to see how practitioners use it for electrosensitivity and whether it's a good choice over other things because you got to choose your battles with so many options available. I think it would be – I mean the way I see it fitting in is a nice Band-Aid approach. It's not getting at the root cause of right. your problem, right? So yep. if you have EMS sensitivity, you're dehydrated. You're not hydrogen de- deficient. Right. Right. And so by becoming dehydrated, tipping into chronic inflammation, you'll build an, you know, a stress factor of, of hydroxyl free radicals, but that's way downstream. That, that's yeah. treating the symptom, not the, not the disorder, if you will. It's treating the symptom, not the root cause of the problem. So hydrogen needs to be looked at as a nice, quick tool to be a fast band-aid in the emergency room. Somebody walks in with a heart attack or acute stroke. For God's sake, give them hydrogen all day long, get them out of their acute phase, get them back to an equilibrium, and tackle the root cause of the problem that started the, the stroke and everything else with their cardiovascular disease that started with you know, chronic inflammation in the gut, loss of microbiome, et cetera. That makes a lot of sense. And could there be an argument, I'm just thinking out loud, for, and this is what Joe Mercola kind of introduced to the biohacking movement, it's, well, when you go fly or you're stuck in a place with a lot of Wi-Fi, maybe you can kind of cancel out a very bad environment that you know is bad with the hydrogen. I don't know if that would work like that, but... I, I think it's unlikely to cancel anything. I mean, it, it's yeah, going to okay. help you mop up the problem. Mop up. But yeah. the danger of saying it's going to cancel something makes yeah, it sound yeah, like it's preventative. Yeah, it wasn't a right choice of word. Yeah. yeah, so, but I think it gets pitched as that incorrectly. Yes. I, I've heard a lot of people okay. say, oh, yeah, it, it'll prevent that injury from happening. And well, maybe, it's dangerous. Yeah, it's maybe, dangerous saying you know, that it, it cancels out EMS. And, it, yeah. you, you know, we all want that quick fix, even though, I mean, I'm into holistic medicine and I wish there was a pill, right? I, I think the closest you can come to a quick fix is grounding, right? Oh, yes. Okay. And, and so as, so as soon as you create a Faraday cage at your skin level, yeah, the EMFs are neutralized, right? And and so that's – you can't measure the potency of that. Like, it's yeah. like so instantaneous. Our skin is designed to be a Faraday cage. As soon as you ground it, you are a Faraday cage. It's the best way to get over something like jet lag. And so way better than yeah. than hydrogen. Take your shoes off and walk in the grass for just a few minutes. In fact, right after this interview, you and I are going to go do that because yeah. you know, we've got <laughs> EMF all around us yeah, right now. And so let's go, let's go ground for a minute. So, um, you know, I think that, that, that that's the kind of stuff that I think, man, that's what we're missing as a human species is we simply disconnected yeah. from the nature that kept us resilient to the biggest EMF that we have, which is the sun. <laughs> yeah. Know? For millions of years, yeah. we've developed with this sun, this massive solar, you know, nuclear reactor that floats around our Earth every day, penetrates our body with gamma radiation every day. And then the Earth itself is the other massive gamma yeah. radiation source. And so we have developed as a species, as biology on planet Earth, we developed in the context of electromagnetic radiation. Yeah. And we were resilient to it. Yeah. And we never had a cancer epidemic until we added the chemicals that would break the, the, the fiber optic cables, that would poison the mitochondria, that would weaken our own signal, that would then allow something like, you know, the, the, the cell phone with as tiny of an influence as that is compared to the sun or Mother yeah. Earth. It's the wrong frequency. It's a non-biologic frequency. And it can suddenly overwhelm a system that's so depleted of its natural force. This is uh, this has been fascinating. And the last thing I'm going to ask you is, um, are you recommending to your patient population to ground inside with a grounding mat or what's your recommendation? Because some practitioners seem very worried about the effects of grounding inside in an electrified environment. Uh, building biologists advise against that. Um, other people, Dr. Klingar told me, you turn off the circuit breaker and then you're fine. You should still ground because people see a lot of benefits. What's your take on grounding? Yeah, the cleaner the better you know, is the obvious answer there. Right. And so you know, there's always margins for, for benefiting. I, I was a total newbie in this world when I got my first grounding sheet 10 years ago. Right. Plugged that sucker into the wall. You know, years later, finding out I had really dirty electricity in my house. Very common. I had an immediate improvement in my health with grounding. 
despite the dirty electricity, despite yeah. everything else, I can tell you I couldn't even believe it. I thought it was totally a joke. <laughs> Plug this stupid thing in. My wife was like, you are completely off your rocker finally. Like, this is a crappy sheet, and it doesn't feel good on the feet. And there's – what do you think this is possibly to do for human health? Right. And I woke up the next morning feeling no morning stiffness, which I couldn't oh. even believe. Like, I had gotten so used to that morning stiffness. takes you 15, 20 steps to kind of get the creaks out of your knees and the feet yep. ache a little bit. To have that gone in a single night, and I didn't wake up that night. That was the first night I hadn't woke up to pee in years. And so that you know, reality of that almost immediate shift in the context of what I know is now dirty electricity in a grounding room, it's still better than nothing. Yeah. And yeah. so I, we can freak ourselves out to the point of paralysis yeah. <laughs> by, by learning more and more detail. But even these simple steps towards reconnecting with nature are going to have a benefit is my take on it. The cleaner you get. And so now what I do is I've got a Stetzer filter, you know, throughout my whole bedroom and house. And the yep. Stetzer filters clean up that dirty electricity, create stable waveforms. So now I have clean electricity and I, I can ground outside my home. So you just run Even a thin better. wire yep. away from my house. And my house is out in the woods of Virginia. And so I'm isolated. So you have very you clean drop ground. drop a grounding spike in that yep. primordial forest. I'm not worried, you know. Yeah. So that's kind of the best and ideal. And it took me years to get there. And my health was immeasurably improved after that. Like I couldn't, I couldn't tell you it was better in the woods than it was in my dirty electricity. Right. I had 85 or 90 percent of the therapeutic benefit was just plug into Mother Earth and let her take yeah. care of the toxicity. Like just do it. Just it's a fundamental it. yeah, thing. Just get going in the right direction. Right. That's what I tell people about nutrition. That's why I tell people about hydration. Like don't freak yourself out of the details yeah. and don't make this thing complicated because actually it's freaking simple. Yeah. You know? Yeah. And as long as just we keep drink the water knowing, instead of drink love. some water, electrolytes, yeah. sure, throw that in there. D I R O. I don't care. Just drink water. <laughs> you know. Start grounding. by drinking it, yeah. then we can grounding. talk about should this. Should you take off your shoes? Of course you should take off your shoes. Yeah. Should I walk barefoot <laughs> in the grass? Duh. <laughs> yeah. Go do, do it. Go do it. You know, right. Well, I think it's better if I lay down in the grass. Well, then lay down in the grass. <laughs> yeah, <it's laughs> right. like, don't, yeah. don't, don't bust me up over the details at this point is kind of my response to my patients. But I love it that we have this intrinsic, like, one, health is slippery slope, right? Once you yeah. get a taste of it, you're like... Well, we could do it more. We could yeah. do it better. We could do it this. Exactly. We could do it that. And that's great. I, I'm excited that the yeah. public dialogue is starting to slide in that direction of can we get crazy healthy instead of crazy sick. Yeah, yeah, it, it's good. But, again, just uh, obsessing about, about the detail. And I see that a lot in the EMF world. People are, that are electrosensitive, they, oh, my God, what is the, the exact tiny teeny tiny degree of dirty electricity ness and should i do this and there's a debate over the grounding and, and i'm like well i don't i don't exactly think it's serving the public and when it comes to educating practitioners what i say is well look look at wh how people are getting better are they getting better and some of them might have a detox reaction that's what Klingar told me and 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 if they do you use certain binders because there's heavy metal uh that 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 start to to move around the body when you get grounding this is a, a clinical observations but then people get tremendously better so i would believe you as a practitioner who's actually seeing people over people who debate about theories <laughs> that's right. yeah a, that's the I important agree. part and and that's uh, what i try to empower all my patients with is the reality that you are your perfect biological asset exactly <laughs> well, you are the most exactly. complicated biological asset and you're you <laughs> and yes. so so yes. don't let any scientist or practitioner tell you what is or isn't working in your body yeah you know at your core what's working what isn't working and you know the key to success in health and so i've got this whole eight week intensive program i do online for patients around the world that can't come to my clinic and the whole message in the end is really be quiet and listen to yourself, not to me. You know? yeah. <laughs> and it's a powerful, powerful stuff that we work with. And we have life coaches that work with our clients all those eight weeks to help them tune in to their own voice that's coming from their own self-identity that we've broached on tonight. So it's a powerful journey into self. And that's, that's an incredibly cool you know, transition from being a chronic disease management guy back in Western medicine 10 years ago. So that's, that's incredible. We're going to end there, but just let people know your links. Uh, how can they find more about your work, restore, where they can 
purchase it and get more info about it? Sure. Uh, my website is Zach Bush, MD, that's Z-A-C-H-B-U-S-H-M-D.com. That's a lot of my educational content there. Uh, some of the products uh, are represented there. Uh, there's usually some reference there to our eight-week intensive program in the clinics. Uh, Restore can be found at uh, RestoreTheNumber4Life.com. Uh, and that website will get you there. You can also find it on Amazon, uh, Amazon Prime for uh, convenience if you're in the U.S. If you're abroad, uh, international markets, the easiest way to get restores through the website iHerb, uh, I-H-E-R-B dot com. And they, they will uh, get our product to you in 100, 120 different countries. That, that's like where that. I buy it. And I can tell you iHerb, it's my favorite now, especially the shipping in Canada. It's next to none. It's incredible. Yeah, free shipping throughout. All right. Well, Zach, thanks for being here. <laughs> thanks so much. Thank you so much. That'll, I hope that sums it up for you. And, sure. Uh, we look forward to seeing how you continue to impact the world. One of my favorite things of being on a uh, podcast like this is that you can know the best science in the world, and if it's not getting out to the public, it's very frustrating and gives you a sense of hopelessness. So it gives me great hope to see your success and your impact on the community that you serve uh, so effectively through this education. So thank you for what you do.